The mundane everyday conceals a myriad of secrets. What seems ordinary can be hiding the strangest and most awe-inspiring of things beyond our wildest imaginations. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three recent discoveries. Earth's crust is dripping like honey into its interior. A mysterious happening is occurring underneath the mountainous range of the Andes. Our Earth's very crust appears to be melting and dripping deeper into the ground. Scientists discovered proof that our planet's crust has been flowing away into the Andes and has been seemingly devoured by the Earth's mantle. In a quest to confirm their data, researchers conducted a sandbox experiment comparing it with the real-life findings. The results confirm that several hundred miles of the Andes have dripped into the mantle. As it turns out, this is not anything new and has occurred worldwide for millennia. Scientists call it lithospheric dripping. The reason it's so profound as a discovery is because we did not know about it before. According to a researcher from the University of Toronto, Julia Anderson, we have confirmed that a deformation on the surface of an area of the Andes Mountains has a large portion of the lithosphere. The Earth's crust and upper mantle below avalanched away. Anderson compared it to dripping like cold syrup or honey deeper into the planetary interior, claiming this is a result of high density. Anderson believes that this lithospheric dripping is responsible for the shifting surface of the Andes. When it comes to geology, there is the upper mantle, the crust, the lithosphere and the lower mantle. The upper mantle is formed of solid rock plates. The lower mantle is where the tectonic plates reside, which are moved by currents of magma. They can create oceans or cause earthquakes. Scientists have been studying the lower mantle and how tectonic plates work for a long time, but are still discovering brand new things in their research. The process of lithospheric dripping goes like this. Two tectonic plates crash together, creating heat. This immense heat and pressure cause them to thicken and drip down deeper into the Earth's mantle, like a sluggish drop of honey oozing from its pot. As this occurs, the weight affects the upper crust and tugs it down, thus forming a temporary basin in the land until the pressure becomes too much and the crust jumps skyward, like a spring, forming mountains. This is how researchers believe the Andes were made. There is evidence in the central Andean plateau to suggest the mountains sprung unexpectedly instead of being formed over time via the process of subduction, another way mountains are formed, which takes far longer over the course of decades, if not centuries. It is thought some of the Andes were formed by a subduction, but fragments of it appear to have only sprung up in our current geological period of the Cenozoic. That is to say, they formed within the past 66 million years. Scientists hope to utilize sandbox modeling in the future to test their theories, but are convinced that lithospheric dripping must be a commonplace occurrence for the Andes area. Alongside digital recreations, researchers used a plexiglass tank with the stimulated area of the mantle and crust with the use of silicon polymer to experiment. Anderson recalls, it was like creating and destroying tectonic mountain belts in a sandbox, floating on a simulated pool of magma all under incredibly precise sub-millimeter measured conditions. Furthermore, Anderson explained, the dripping occurs over hours, so you wouldn't see much happening from one minute to the next, but if you checked every few hours, you would clearly see the change. It just requires patience. Their sandbox experimentation proved that the Andes was created by lithospheric dripping, and that it is perfectly normal to witness it happening now, since the area is susceptible to it. Scientists just found mountains of sugar hidden in the ocean. The wording sugar in the ocean is sure to puzzle the average person, but in this case refers to the wonderful aquatic plant known as seagrass. Within them, seagrass meadows store incredible amounts of sugar, something that has remained a secret until now. Within the seabed of seagrass hides an estimated 32 billion soda cans worth of sugar. This was discovered by a team of researchers in Bremen, Germany, who found that seagrass meadows infuse their seabed with large amounts of sugar as a byproduct. 
Further lab analysis revealed that seagrass seabeds possess 80 times the amount of sugar than ordinary seabeds. Seagrass itself is a valuable aquatic asset. Oftentimes under seas and oceans, it can be the lone flowering plant in vastly oceanic landscapes. It's invaluable for us as humans too, as it stores twice as much emitted carbon than forests, and to sweeten its appeal, seagrass envelops it at a rate 35 times that of trees. That makes seagrass meadows one of the most efficient techniques for battling the buildup of carbon dioxide on our planet, and the best option for what researchers called global sinkholes for CO2. Manuel Lebec, the head researcher from the Max Planck Institute for Marine Microbiology stated, To put this into perspective, we estimate that worldwide there are between 0.6 and 1.3 million tons of sugar, mainly in the form of sucrose in the seagrass seabed. The sugar is produced during the natural process of seagrass undergoing photosynthesis. They consume the sugar, sucrose to be precise, to upkeep their metabolism. However, whenever there is a surplus of sunlight, the seagrass, instead of wasting the excess sugar, stores it for further use inside the seabed that it can reach to when sunlight is low. Something that has confused scientists is why microorganisms are not swarming the seabed to consume the sucrose. Sugar is notably the easiest mineral for microbes to devour. Maggie Soggin, an author of the study, claims, What we realized is that seagrass, like many other plants, release phenolic compounds to their sediments. Phenolics are present in products such as coffee, fruits, and red wine. They have antimicrobial properties which keep the microbes away. In an experiment where they tested microbes under sugar in a non-phenolic setting, to a phenolic setting, less sucrose was consumed by the microbes in the phenolic setting. Despite the miraculous properties of seagrass, it's categorized as an endangered plant. If there were more of them, we would be able to store significantly more carbon dioxide residue, which would undoubtedly help ease global warming and possibly reverse climate change, but the lack of them severely wounds that chance. Lebeek said, Looking at how much blue carbon, that is carbon captured by the world's ocean and coastal ecosystems, is lost when seagrass communities are decimated, our research clearly shows. It is not only the seagrass itself, but also the large amounts of sucrose underneath live seagrasses that would result in a loss of stored carbon. When seagrass meadows are destroyed, the microbes are able to degrade the seabed. This process releases more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere instead of keeping it locked away. Lebeek estimates that around 1.54 million tons of CO2 would be released into the skies globally should more of these meadows fall. Researchers uncover new pathway for accumulation of age-promoting zombie cells. Despite their frightening name, zombie cells are officially known as senescent cells. These are cells which can no longer divide. Senescent cells are associated with late-life diseases like cardiovascular disease, Alzheimer's, and cancer. A recent discovery revealed that damaged telomeres, which are tiny protective coatings on chromosomes that can cause cells to become senescent. It's believed further research could point to a prospective cure for cancer as well as improved anti-aging techniques. Patricia Apresco, Doctor of Environmental and Occupational Health at the University of Pittsburgh, claims zombie cells are still alive, but they cannot divide, so they do not help replenish tissues. Although zombie cells do not function properly, they're not couch potatoes. They actively secrete chemicals that promote inflammation and damage neighboring cells. Telomeres shorten over time as cells divide, but much remains unclear in the science behind how quickly cells must shorten in order for a telomere to deplete to the point of senescence. Scientists, for decades, have lacked the necessary tools required to investigate. Ryan Barnes, another doctor on Apresco's team, states that our new tool is like a molecular sniper. It creates oxidative damage exclusively at the telomeres. The researchers used this tool to test on lab-grown human cells and found that the damage done to the cells caused them to zombify in merely four days compared to the weeks or months it takes for them to become senescent normally by being shortened in the lab. Apresco states, We found a new mechanism for inducing senescent cells that is completely dependent on telomeres. These findings also solve the puzzle of why dysfunctional telomeres are not always shorter than functional ones. 
Excessive smoking, alcohol, or even sunlight can damage human DNA and increase the likelihood of our cells becoming zombie cells. Barnes optimistically declared, Now that we understand this mechanism, we can start to test interventions to prevent senescence. For example, maybe there are ways to target antioxidants to the telomeres to protect them from oxidative damage. The ordinary everyday is filled with exciting findings and yet we may never know what tomorrow brings. The human quest for knowledge is endless, with a thousand opportunities lurking in the shadows of our existence. But what do you make of these new discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.